You can watch down here in the corner. These Man, you are, are not a particularly good pilot. Yeah, I'm not flying it. It's the well, computer's doing it. Hi everybody, this is Lee Hutchinson from Ars Technica, and I'm here today with astronaut Scott Kelly. Uh, Scott has just spent uh, a year on the International Space Station. I'm sure you're glad to be back on Earth with us. Earth's good. We're going to be playing Kerbal Space Program, which is a space simulator, and we're going to be uh, having Scott sort of walk us through some aspects of space flight, uh, assuming our rocket doesn't blow up. Are you ready, Scott? Ready to go. We're staged up here on our launch pad. We have sort of a, a nice little fake space shuttle. Uh, it's got boosters and everything. It works just like the real space shuttle. I'm sure. <laughs> so before we hit go here, can you tell us very briefly exactly what an orbital inclination is, what that means in this context? It's basically the, the highest point of latitude that you'll get to in your orbital ground track, latitude relative to the equator. Here we go. So we're on autopilot right now, and the game is going to take us, hopefully, through uh, through this launch sequence. In real life, you've got quite a bit of atmosphere to punch through, and there's yeah. that period you always hear the PAO officer call out about max Q. Max Q. What is max Q? It's maximum dynamic pressure. Q is the symbol in uh, aerodynamics for dynamic pressure, and max Q is when you, your combination of your speed and the thickness of the atmosphere mm -hmm. gives you the maximum pressure on the vehicle and it's uh, pretty short uh, shortly after launch engines will throttle down to avoid getting to uh, too high of a max dynamic pressure and then they'll throttle back up and the common call you hear on the ground is go at throttle up now you don't fly this hands on the computer you, does the assembly, yeah the right? computer flies the uh, space shuttle to uh, to space in an emergency, if you had issues with uh, the control, you can take over manually after 90 seconds. And I want to point out that this Jebediah Kerman looks, yes, Jeb. looks, uh, looks like my brother a little bit. <laughs> so Apogee is the highest point in your orbit, the furthest uh, away from the surface and perigee is the lowest point in your orbit. So in this case, we are at apogee. And if we were going to circularize our orbit, we would, uh, the best way to do it, I think the most fuel efficient way to do it, is to do it, it at apogee. Actually, the space shuttle has two ohms burns generally. And the, mm. the first one is to give you a little bit more delta V to get to orbit. The second one is the one that's done at your apogee or you know pretty close to it, which then circularizes uh, your orbit. So instead of you know coming back and re-entering the earth's atmosphere you're in a uh, you know more of a circle versus a uh, an ellipse now we can kind of demonstrate that a little bit by changing our orbit here if i apply a little bit of thrust here mm -hmm. and then we pop back and look at our orbital map we can see already oh, yeah, look at that. immediately opposite us this is our period of i'm actually piling on probably more delta v mm -hmm. than i want at this point <laughs> we're applying more eccentricity to our orbit i guess we're making it more and more egg-shaped eccentric basically. there you go <laughs> which also means we're slowing down so as our orbit yes. gets bigger our speed again counterintuitive we've added energy to the system you would think that would make you go faster but really what it does is make you go makes you go higher yes which in fact then makes you go slower NASA so could good. probably use this to teach you know, it's future funny. astronauts orbital mechanics. Actually, I forgot to dump our external tank. Let me do that real quick. Man, that is a oh, fatal error. Right. Look at you. <laughs> you are crashing. Wait a, minute. Wait a minute. We are crashing. No, no, we're fine. It's fine. It's all fine. You bounced off of it. That's okay. They orbit can do that. This little uh, nose cap there on the space shuttle, uh -huh. you just crushed it. I think I may have, I may have scraped that. our tiles a little bit. Holy cow. <laughs> Bad well, I, 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 uh, I punched the explosive bolts without any, I guess we could probably a, try to go separation. somewhere a little bit. Let's see here. Let's, let's see if I can give us a little bit of a, a little bit of a step. Oh boy. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, there we go. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah. So the way the space shuttle or really, you know, the Soyuz or, you know, spacecraft come back to earth is you only have to change your orbital velocity by a few hundred miles an hour. So, you know, in both the shuttle and the, the Soyuz cases, you fire an engine, so you turn around backwards, so now you're going, you know, instead of going pointy in forward, you're going uh, pointy in backwards. Um, then you fire those engines to slow down, and the rest of the, your velocity is uh, removed from the spacecraft with friction in the atmosphere in the form of heat. So I was going to try, Scott, to bring us into landing here. Um, our orbital, our ground speed is increasing rapidly. Mm -hmm. 
Well, just get us into the atmosphere. Okay. We can Done. Uh, we can then just blow the hatch. <laughs> Done. And we'll jump out and hopefully survive we, under um, our parachutes. I th oh, I forgot to flip us around prograde. So we're actually we're entering. Um, Ooh, this back is, in first. Yeah, technically I'd call this an, an ass in first reentry. Yeah. All right, Scott. Well, this has been an excellent demonstration of why you're an astronaut and I'm not. How was that for you? How close to real life was that for you? And did you enjoy it? It was exactly like real life. <laughs> nah, actually, I'm just kidding. It was good. You know, it was. Um, I think it's something that NASA could use to train like future uh, flight controllers and astronauts a little bit more about orbital mechanics. Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to, to Simone Riboldi of the YouTube channel, Simon and Simon. Thank you for preparing uh, some of the Kerbal Space Program stuff for us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you also to Squad, the Kerbal Space Program uh, developers, uh, for helping us out uh, to make this demonstration happen. Much appreciated, folks.